and welcome back to my channel black imperial travel it is sunday march 24th it is 7 53 a.m here in santander spain i got my traveling hat on i got my traveling hat on so y'all know what that means it is semana santa here in spain or it translates to english uh, holy week so the week leading up to easter we always have off of school so that means i'm off work and if i get off work a week y'all know i'm traveling so finally hitting up country number 26 and going to ireland i have been really wanting to go to ireland for a while so i'm excited that today is finally the day and i'm going to be heading to galway so i'm flying here um from santander straight from santander finally <laughs> i don't have to travel elsewhere to fly but straight from here in santander i'm flying to dublin um i should get to dublin around 11 a.m. Dublin is an hour behind Santander, so it would really be 12 Spain time, but 11 like UK Ireland time because I'm leaving here at 10 a.m. And then from there, I have a bus from the Dublin airport um, at 12.30 to head to Galway, and I should get to Galway a little before four o'clock. So I'll be in Galway for two days, and then I'll head back to the big city of Dublin to spend the rest of my five days of my vacation. This first part is us going to Galway. I'm very excited. So I'm about to order the Cabify, AKA Uber in Spain, so I can get to the airport. I did have an issue. Normally I don't have this issue with Ryanair, but this time they weren't able to verify my passport information on the app. So I have to go to the check-in desk to get that verified and get my boarding pass. So that's why I'm heading out just a little earlier because Santander Airport is very small. Security usually takes five minutes, if that, but I just wanna make sure I can get my boarding pass because I don't know how many more of us on this flight have had this issue. So hopefully everything with that goes smooth, but so that I'm calm, <laughs> I'm about to leave for the airport nice and early. So yes, that's my spiel. I'm very excited for this one. So come along, let's go. It is 8.20 a.m. I'm literally through security. I got my boarding pass and have gone through security. This is my little boarding pass. <laughs> Don't it look like a receipt? <laughs> I have an hour to kill because we board at 9.20 or so. See y'all when we board. It is 9.38 a.m., so almost 9.40 here at the window. I will see you all in a little over two hours when we get to Dublin. It's 11.02 a.m., so we have landed here in Dublin right on time. I'm gonna get myself together, and I will see y'all in a second. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. But it's literally a little after 12 o'clock here. It's 12.05. I'm here, if you can see the air coach buses. So it was really easy to find, literally right outside of Arrivals Terminal. My bus should leave at 12.30. I booked my ticket for the bus on Omeo. I'll put it here. I just grabbed a quick lunch of like Caesar salad. Didn't record that because there was a lot of music bumping in there and it was just a Caesar salad. And I want this part getting to Galway to be short and the Galway stuff to be long. <laughs> One thing I did forget is that everything here in Ireland is like UK based. So I had to get a UK outlet adapter because I left mine at home because I'm used to traveling throughout Europe and I hadn't been to England in like two years and I, I just forgot. So because of that, <laughs> I had to buy one at the airport for like 10 euro, but that's okay. Um, but I did want to mention that, that you need a like UK to US or Euro, Europe adapter if you come to Ireland. My bus should be here soon and then I'll be on my way to Galway. So it is 12.35, the bus was a little behind schedule, on the bus now, should get to Galway in like three hours. So yeah, 
It is literally 3.58, so basically 4 o'clock. Finally here in Galway at the coach station. So I'm about to take a 10 minute walk to my hotel and then get to the hotel, show you all the room. Then I'm gonna regroup, shower, get myself together to finally explore Galway. But yeah, that took almost four hours. Like that was longer than, than advertised. We were supposed to get here at 3.15. So I was just tired of being on the bus. But yeah, heading to the hotel. Here we are at the house hotel, which is where I stayed at in Galway for two nights. I liked the hotel, they had good service. Here is the hallway and the bathroom. The bathroom was clean, however, I thought the shower was a little small, but I was surprised they had washcloths. I'm used to bringing my own because in Europe, it's not common. The bed was huge, which I really enjoyed. The TV had my name on it, so I thought that was funny. And it was a cute view outside. So it is basically five o'clock now. I have gotten myself together. It is cold and raining and wet. So yes, my hair is out, but I had to put it in a little bun. And you know, my Switzerland girl, my, my ear band, she's back. So finally, we about to hit the streets of Galway and see what's going on out there. I just want to do a little walking around, but if it's raining too hard, you know, I'm gonna pop into somebody's bar, pub, whatever. Um, but yeah, just gonna do some walking around and exploring. We're finally, we're finally here. We're finally in Galway. So I'm excited. for a classic whiskey tasting. Walking around downtown Galway, I ran into this bar. Outside they had a sign that said they had whiskey flights. So you know I had to come. I did their classic tasting, which I think was 12 or 14 euro. I don't remember exactly, but there it is, the classic platter. We started with the Tullamore Dew. I thought that this one was pretty good, honestly. I think I've had it before, but I liked it and it was smooth. This was the red breast. I had never had this one, but this one honestly was my least favorite of the flight. It just had some notes that I wasn't necessarily a fan of. This was the Connemara. This one was my favorite. I didn't realize I liked Petey whiskeys, but Petey gives it that smoke flavor, and that's what I really liked. But overall, it was a really good experience. So, as you can see, I am back outside, <laughs> uh, clearly, because it's still raining and things. I've just finished the whiskey tasting. I was just walking by and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in Ireland. Of course I want to try whiskey. I'm a whiskey girl and I've been a whiskey girl, so I, I couldn't resist. So, I'm going to keep walking around and exploring. I don't know the exact time right now because everything is covered up, but I feel like it's like 5.50 around that time. So, probably going to get dinner or something like that with an early dinner for the next like 30 minutes to an hour or so just for the simple fact that I'm hungry because the last time I ate was a Caesar salad at like noon. <laughs> I'm sorry if the recording is like less and not as much but it is raining so I'm trying my best. Just basically here in the main downtown area of Galway just walking around and exploring. because I did not record a video of myself when I got to the restaurant. <laughs> so this is what I had for dinner. I went to Hooked, which is obviously a seafood restaurant. When I Googled seafood in Galway, this came up first. It had 4.7 stars. So I wanted to try the mussels with the white wine and garlic sauce and their special of mac and cheese with spicy shrimp. 
And of course, with seafood, you have to have a glass of white wine. She said that one was similar to a Riesling, so of course, I really liked it. The mussels were good. They were just small. I don't know if you can tell, like the meat and the mussels themselves were small, but the flavor was good and fresh. Here was the mac and cheese. I was actually impressed with the mac and cheese, I'm not gonna lie. However, I did wish that they had more spicy shrimp in the mac and cheese, but overall, I was pleased with my dinner. I have a candy <laughs> in my mouth per usual because they were offering them leaving the restaurant, but I have finished at Hooked. I thought the food was pretty good. I definitely am spoiled living in Spain because that glass of wine I got was 750 euro. Y'all know in Spain, like on the high end, that would have been three euro on the high end. I said, whoa. <laughs> mm. Done eating dinner. It's almost 7.20 p.m. here now. Luckily, it's not raining right now, but I'm just gonna walk around, do some bar hopping for tonight. And that's pretty much gonna be what I'm gonna do for the rest of the evening for my first day, night, whatever, <laughs> here in Galway. I found myself back in the main uh, city area, but I kept walking around to see what was different, you know, and how it looked different in nighttime. And as I came around, I stumbled upon the Buddha bar, which I thought was really cool. It had a really nice theme, a nice vibe, and everyone in there was really nice. So I said, you know, nice bar, let me try a drink. So the drink I decided to go with was the Cornography, and it really tasted like a sweet whiskey drink. It definitely had the caramel. You tasted the whiskey, but honestly for me, because I didn't have dessert at dinner, this was my dessert. Okay, it is a little after 10 o'clock. <laughs> I know there has been a bit of a time lapse, but it was raining. It is still raining a lot out there. So I tried to go to another bar to do another whiskey tasting, but it was double the price of the first whiskey tasting that I had did. So that it was 28 euros. So I said, no, I'm not doing that. So then I was walking around and that's how I ended up at the Buddha bar place and got like the dessert whiskey. And then I had went to this bar that had live music, but it was really, honestly, like it was really packed in there. So I didn't want to record. Came back to the hotel, been, um, down there at the hotel bar had a glass of Prosecco because I've been on the phone with everybody in my family and now I am back in the room so that was today Sunday here in Galway tomorrow I do have a full day I have a full tour planned um, I booked on get your guide I'll put get your guide I booked to like I hope I'm pronouncing it right but the cliffs of mower it's m-o-h-e-r so I don't know if it's like mower moher but it's basically like a tour of like this whole area of like where I'm at which I think is like Western Ireland but I will give you the exact information tomorrow we're supposed to be meeting up at 9 15 because the tour leaves at 9 30. luckily the tour is literally a six minute walk from where I am here at the hotel and luckily breakfast is included at my hotel so all I have to do is go down eat breakfast in the morning and then walk to my tour and it's an all-day tour I should be getting back after everything with the tour I should be getting back to Galway around 5 5 30 p.m. so with all that being said it's been a great first day in Galway I know I got here or got outside around like five o'clock but I still have enjoyed exploring and looking around but I'm excited to see what all of that has to offer tomorrow so see you then Hey y'all and good morning. It is Monday, March 25th. It is 8, 10 a.m. here in Galway. It is yet another rainy day <laughs> in Galway, but that's okay. We keep it moving. So as I had mentioned yesterday, today is the tour to the Cliffs of Mower. It looked like um, on the app, there are a lot of stops. Give me a second, let me get my phone. So do you see all of those dots? We start here at the G in Galway and we're supposed to be visiting all of those dots. <laughs> so um, obviously that'll be a lot to say right here, right now. So as we visit them, I will let you all know what we're doing when. I'm about to go downstairs and have some breakfast. So you all will get to see the lobby and stuff because I didn't record that yesterday because I came in exasperated from my walk in the rain. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what we're doing today. Full day tour. Should be back in Galway by 5.30 p.m. But lots to see, lots to do. So yeah, that's what I got for y'all. See you soon. Of course.
course, but it's 9, 12 a.m. here for the tour. So we should be leaving around 9.30. Yes, it is still raining, <laughs> but it is a little after 10 a.m. We are here at our first stop. It is a castle. I don't remember the name right now, <laughs> but I will look it up later so that I can put it on this video. But I don't remember the name, but it is a castle. So I will show you all what it looks like. Wendy. There is water all over my camera lens, but I'm trying to for y'all to see the things. Okay, I'm trying as you can as you can see. Maybe was out here for 10 minutes. I don't even know what time it is, but I'm taking my tail back to the bus child. It's cold, it's windy, and it's wet. And I do not want to get sick. So there it go. That's enough for me. Back back to the bus. We're supposed to be leaving here at 10 30. AM and we are here to tour the chocolate factory. So oh, there you go. didn't know we were doing that. in a very unique, unique part of Ireland, the burn. You probably get a sense that the landscape was very different, very, very rocky. So hazelnut and chocolate, to begin, only 2% of chocolatiers in the world actually make their chocolate from scratch. So most chocolate is imported, melted down, and remade again. And having lived in the US for many, many years, so often our, our chocolate has ingredients in it that we don't recognize. So the climate in Ireland is not, um, we can't grow cacao beans, and that's what chocolate is made from, um, because it needs to grow in a very, very tropical, wet environment. And so we import the cacao bean, you can pass it around here, don't eat it, it's raw, <laughs> and we import it, and then we make the chocolate from scratch. Milk chocolate. Dark chocolate. We've got fabulous hot chocolate, um, all of our uh, chocolates, uh, all our pastry. So that was the chocolate tour. Very cool. I bought this one salted honey truffle for 250 euro. They also had salted caramel, but I feel like I do salted caramel a lot and I've never had salted honey. So we're gonna try it right now. Give me a second. Here she is. Yes, it is still raining. That is really good. <laughs> mm. I taste a little of the honey, a little salt, a little chocolate. It's good. So yeah, on to the next stop soon. I don't know if you can see where we are here, but like, you see, we're like in this like mountainous 
valley type situation he did say this whole like greater area basically of what we're um exploring today is called burn hope i'm pronouncing that right b-u-r-r-e-n but like with their irish accent i don't think i'm giving it justice but it's fine <laughs> i can't see the time <laughs> but yeah um i think we have a little bit more time here but i'm done because the only thing left is to visit the coffee shop and you know i don't need none of that because i don't need to go to the bathroom so i'm about to get back on the bus out of the rain out of the cold and i will see y'all at the next stop pinnacle well yes it is still raining <laughs> but we just made a quick stop because as you could see i hope you could see the guy that i was recording that it's drinkable water there so that's cool and it looked really clean i just i don't i'm not trying it because i don't have a water bottle we are now in an area that is like unesco protected it's a <laughs> national park or of some sort like that i'll have to get the Get the name because I don't remember but that's the, the area we're in now. here now for lunch I was asleep for a little bit there on the bus um, but yeah I think he said we have to be back on the bus at 1 15 so I'm just gonna stop here for a quick lunch and then I think off to the cliffs of mower such a big bowl but it's shallow anyway pretty good yeah. it's creamy and I like the fish so yeah right outside Fitz's pub it's 1 11 p.m. have just finished lunch we were supposed to be back on the bus you see the bus driver waiting for us we we're supposed to be back at 1 15 but I think I'm in the in the beginning of that because some people are still finishing up their meals um, lunch was good I just wish the portion was a little bigger to be honest I think now we are going to the cliffs of mower it is still drizzling misting raining whatever you want to call it so <laughs> that's just what it's going to be today so this is all y'all going to get to see of me today yeah having a good day got some lunch so i'm energized and ready to keep going it is 1 36 p.m it is windy but it's not raining right now <laughs> So hopefully it stays that way. We're officially here at the Cliffs of Mower. We have two hours here. We don't have to be back on the bus until 3.30. You can see there is a lot to see and explore. So let's do it. Something I found really cool is you see all these little gift shops. They're built into the land. When our tour guide dropped us off, he told us that at the Cliffs of Mower Experience, it basically is a fork and you can go to the right or to the left. So to start, I went basically to the right and up those stairs. And here we are at the cliffs. The cliffs are really, really gorgeous. It's one of those marvels of nature where you just sit there and you're like, Wow, <laughs> look at all of this. And I tried to zoom in so that you can see the cave features that were there as well. There was some stair climbing, but also there were some ramps on the side that you could use if needed. But even though it was rainy, windy, cloudy, misty, it was really nice to walk around and just enjoy what nature had to offer and just to see something as nice and as marvelous as this was, I honestly really did enjoy it. It's back misting again and I had to <laughs> button my jacket all the way to the top so that it would stop flying off my head. But you can see 
the cliffs in the back and also the tower. So a lot to do, a lot to see. I know I look crazy, but oh well, I'm living life. <laughs> So once you get to the top and you see O'Brien's Tower, you see that path where you can continue going. Um, obviously you want to stop and look because everything looks different at different angles, but it will tell you if you keep going down that path, you're not in the Cliffs of Mower experience anymore. Not saying that that's a bad thing, but they're just letting you know, you know, that's it for the quote unquote tourist part of the experience and now you are entering one of the many walking or hiking trails that Ireland has. So as you can see, Cliffs of Mower Coaster Walk is what you're on now. Here now, walking along the coastal path, we cannot pass this point. You see the water is right there. We're not passing this point. We're following the directions on that sign. Our tour guide said 66 people have died out here messing around because <laughs> there's active rock slides and landslides here all the time because of the shell and the limestone. It's sensitive. You know, I'm very risk averse. I'm staying on the path. <laughs> but we are here enjoying our little nature walk um, here at the Cliffs of Mower. see there's a lot of flooding so this is where I'm going to turn around and go back this way So this is where we started. I came, I went up there, did that. Now I'm coming this way to do this side. It may not seem that you've walked that far, but I wanted to show you how far I actually was from the tower once I went to the fork on the left side. So similar to the right side, you have a section that's for the Cliffs of Mower experience, and then you leave that to do the same thing, the Cliffs of Mower coastal walk, but just on another side. I think it actually probably is a loop around. However, there was just too much uh, wet rain and flooding for me to wanna do that. Maybe on a sunny day, I might have done it since we did have two free hours. But for me, it was enough to just walk around, get some different views, and see what I wanted to see. So here on the other side, I just checked, it's 2.33 p.m. So we still have an hour here and I'm kind of done. <laughs> like I've seen what I've needed to see. Um, there is like an exhibition center they said that we have tickets for, kind of like a museum. So I'll probably go in there and look around since we got tickets for it. But as far as the walking and stuff goes, I'm about tired of that. So we about to wrap this up. So 2.48 p.m. now inside the exhibition center. So I'm about to go around and see what's going on in here. Happy to be inside, out of the rain, wind and cold. <laughs> So it is 3.13 p.m. So we should be leaving here in a little, little more than 15 minutes or so. I like the little exhibition center as far as like recording. There wasn't much to see on camera, but in person, I think that there was a lot of nice information about the history of the cliffs, the climate here, how they're trying to maintain the climate as best as they can due to climate change and things of that nature. So I did find the information itself useful, informative, and I like museums anyway waiting to get back on the bus because I think this is it. I think after this, if there is one more stop, we'll do that. But if not, I think that we'll be heading back to Galway. We 
took a stop for photos. And that's what I showed you. All of that back there. Isn't it pretty? Okay, it is 5, 12 p.m. We are officially back here in Galway. And I don't know if you noticed, it ain't raining. That's crazy, right? Also, I don't think I mentioned officially on the vlog. I completely forgot that like, Ireland is the same as the UK as to where they drive on the other side of the road. So I just be, cause baby, I don't know nothing about that. And the tour guide gave us a couple bars um, to check out as well in areas that I haven't hit uh, in town yet. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. Like I just said, our tour guide mentioned that if you like whiskey, you should check out this bar. So of course, <laughs> this was somewhere for me to go. 13 on the green. Um, this actually wasn't on their drinks menu, but that little poster back in the back on the door said that they had a whiskey of the month, and that actually was it, the legendary Silky Whiskey. I hadn't tried it, so I told her, let me try it and have my rocks on the side, and I thought it was pretty good. Okay, so I finished at the bar 13 on the green, I believe. Just wanted to try out some whiskey. I know where I'm at now, so this is like where you come out from like the walking area which I've seen a lot of and I know what I want to eat for dinner but not at this moment it was the seafood place the tour guide from today he did recommend it for seafood um, but I'm not ready for dinner so there was another bar down that street that he told me to check out I'm gonna check out maybe one or two you know me do a little bar hop because that way is towards the bus station that I got dropped off and that's what I haven't been able to explore but the rest of this I have explored yesterday. So I'm looking around, there's a lot going on in the park. I'll record it in a second so y'all can see. But yeah, just gonna keep keep going, keep trying to explore what I haven't seen thus far and get all I can because today is my last full day in Galway. So I just finished at that bar. I don't know how to pronounce it because it's in the Irish language. I didn't like it. Two reasons I didn't like it. If I'm at a bar, I'm sitting at the bar and you ask me to pay in advance before I get my drink. I personally don't like places with that kind of like policy type energy because it's like, I'm sitting at the bar. What do you think I'm gonna do, run away? I've been to plenty of bars in this city and have paid, you know, after at least I've received my drink, but you telling me to pay before I receive my drink, I don't know, it's kind of funny, especially when it took me a while to get served at the bar. It took me a while to get served. So I just was not a fan of there. Wouldn't recommend it to anybody of my complexion and wouldn't go back. I'm hungry though, so I'm going to head to the seafood spot I was telling you about earlier, which is closer to the area towards my hotel. Like I said, towards the more like pedestrian walking area. Early dinner, but all I had was that little fish stew, so I'm hungry, it's time to eat. So it is 6.51 p.m. I'm here now. I ordered three of their oysters because I haven't had oysters since I've been in Ireland yet. Got a garlic sauce and I got a fish skewers and fries. And the fish skewers, she said, is a mixture of cod and hake. I'm still a girl who likes East Coast oysters, but I thought these oysters were pretty good and they were meaty, a little briny, a little fishy, but they had good flavor, so I liked them. This was my fish skewer with a whole lot of chips, but you know, I call them fries. I tried the fries without the garlic sauce first. They needed the sauce. The fries had no seasoning to me, no flavor, but the fish was good, hot, and crispy. I had to come back to the room to drop off a couple things, use the bathroom, get myself together. Honestly, I really could stay in here, y'all. <laughs> I 
I really could take a shower and get my pajamas, but because it's my last night, I mean, I'm not going out, out. I was just gonna do a little bit more walking around, a little bit more exploring, but I could definitely see myself be back here in like an hour and a half because I'm not going to be out late. That's just not something I'm going to do because I've been out all day. So we're going to do that and that's gonna be it. That's gonna be it for Galway. but I was just walking around and stumbled upon this rooftop bar, so I stopped to get a drink. I just wanted to pop out on the terrace to see everything outside before I left, but here we are. Okay, hey y'all, it is 9.06 p.m. here. As you can see, officially back at the room. I really have explored all of Galway that I have wanted to see, especially tonight. I got to walk all the way up to that hotel where they had the rooftop bar, and after that, you're basically just, it's residential and things like that. So I've gotten to see all of the city that I have wanted to see in two days, even with the weather and the rain. So that's really, really nice. So now it's time for me to take a shower, get my pajamas and pack up. My bus back to Dublin tomorrow leaves here at 1230. So I don't have an early start. Gonna get breakfast at the hotel in the morning and then get ready and everything to be able to get myself together to head to Dublin. So Galway has been really fun. I have really enjoyed it. It's been a nice introduction to Ireland as this is my first time in Ireland. Child, I'm getting old. I can't hang like I used to. So it's time for me to pack, time for me to pack it on up and I will see y'all in the morning. Hey y'all, good morning. It is Tuesday, March 26th. It is a little before 11.20 a.m. here in Galway. So about to head downstairs to the lobby to check out. Check out is at 11.30. I like that. This is a later checkout than normal. I feel like checkout's normally at like 10 a.m. or something. So I like that they standard, not extra standard, have a later checkout. As you all know, about to take the bus back to Dublin. The tour guide yesterday, he said the bus I chose was not the good one and that it takes longer than it should. And I'm like, yeah. But, you know, I usually look up my tickets on Omeo. I'll put it over here. But I usually look up my things on Omeo and they were like, that's the best option. But they had a train and I feel like the train probably would have been quicker. The point is I already bought the ticket, so it's done. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to sit on the bus back to Dublin. It is what it is. It's another rainy day here in Galway. So my bus doesn't leave here till 1230. So I'm just gonna sit in the lobby until about noon, maybe a little before noon, and then walk up to the bus station the same way that I came. I already know the route. It's about 10 minutes, a little over 10 minutes from here at the hotel. This has been Galway. It's been cool, but it's time to continue <laughs> my vacation in the bigger city of Dublin. It is 12.10 p.m. here in the bus station now. And I'm pretty sure the bus I'm getting on has literally just pulled up. So, about to head back to Dublin. The lights are off, so hopefully you can see me. But I've officially boarded the bus to Dublin. So this has been Galway. See you next time.